Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial I want to show you how you can set up and speed limit for the AI cars so that the AI car just calculate by itself how much is uh, allowed on this road to drive. So I want that the path has this information. So let's go into the path and give the path a new variable that just called speed limit and let's make this to a float like that. So the point is now that we go to our path 1, 2 and 3 and we take our path right here and go make the speed limit public so then we can set it in the world like that. Let's say this will be 20 and also this one and this one. So the interesting thing about that is when you change something on the path, the AI cars don't follow his path anymore. So that's the reason for this is that we take our array from the path and just say, okay, the first car for the first path and go on. But the problem is, when you change something on the path, the index are different. So, we have to fix that. First of all, we go to the AI core and we have to change this one. So, let's make a new function that called select path. Like that. So, and this function will get the real index of the path that you want. So let's take this part here and put it into the select path function. Because the first thing is we get all path as we did before. But now we take this one here and say for each loop put the array inside here. And now we need a reference. So let's get back to our path and make another variable. Let's say this will be the name. And the name in this case will be just to make it simple an integer. You can of course do it to a string, whatever you want, but in this case let's make an integer. Let's compile this here and now we need the name of the parse. So we can set it before. Let's make this public as well. And when we go to our scene here, we can set the name. So let's make it simple. The first path is 0, the second path is 1, and the third path is 2. Great. So let's go back to our AI car and we have to check if the path and the path name, so in this case get name that we have created and we have to check if both of these are equal. So int integer equal. Let's check this here and of course we need a branch to check it. Put this into the condition and the loop body will be go to the branch. Great. So now it will always check which is the real integer, uh, the real index of the path. So we have to set something. So let's make another variable for the AI car that called active path. And the active path will be a path object reference, like that. So let's set it on true. It set, will set it and the active path will be the array element. Like that. Great. So compile and save that. So that's the select path function. So we go back to our event graph and we could just can and now we have to take the event tick and get, uh, put it right here into the get path function. But now we have to change the get path function of course and so we can remove the input because we didn't need it anymore. 
get into the get path function delete this one here take our active path and put it right here and connect this one as well great so now as you can see it already checks which one is the right path okay but now we have to call the select path function of course so let's uh, go to our spawn function unplug the driving select path call the function and go back to driving so when it spawns it select the path and then drive the path so let's check if it works so with play and as you can see now the cars follow his path again great so but now we want that the car calculate uh, which speed limit is allowed so let's go back to our AI car and we can go to our event graph and let's make a function for that so let's say add custom event and this will be set speed like that so the first thing is that we need a branch and the question will be is the car standing because yeah when it's stand it doesn't have to calculate the speed of course then we have to check if the vehicle movement so in this case the get forward speed so we have to say float multiplied by another float and this will be 0 0.036 so that's the calculation to get the forward speed in kilometer great so and the other thing is we take our active path and say get speed limit and now we have of course check is the actual speed under the speed limit or is it over the speed limit or is this in uh, is this equal to the speed limit so let's make a tolerance say float plus float and we say float minus float because so we have a little tolerance otherwise the speed will just go up down up down and this will be not so smoothly like it should so we say float in range and in this case we have the value that's the actual speed then we have this oh let's switch this around here we have the minimum and the maximum like that so now it checks is the actual speed in a range between the speed limit minus one and plus one so it has the tolerance so of course we need an another branch for this to ask so we go from false into the branch and this will be the condition like that so now we have to set the speed so let's do that on the false condition it will be set it and now we have to calculate the speed limit so float minus float minus the actual speed then we say float defeated by float put this to 500 get our actual speed and say the actual speed plus the speed that it needed like that then of course we have to set this throttle input like that oh yeah sorry of course we have to do this one here so the kilometer minus the speed limit and we go from here and say delay and this will be one second so it will be check the speed every second on true of course do as well 
and then we just call the function again. Great, so this will be the set speed. So of course we have to call the function, so let's go to our driving and say set speed. Okay. Great. So compile and save that. Let's check if it works. So to check it, let's make it quick and dirty. Give a text element, I already said it, like that. And the text will be set text to the actual speed, like that. So, now we can see. Hit play and it drives to 20. Yeah, it take a moment to calculate the input, but after a few seconds it will be the last thing I want to show you is that you can change the speed limit while the car is driving. For this, let's go back to our AI car and be sure that on the vehicle movement the automatic transmission is set to false, otherwise the function don't work. And for this, let's create another path right here, like that. Put this to the end of the road. Okay. And the speed limit for this path, let's say, is 50, and the name is 3. Okay, so let's create another blueprint class actor for change path. This just needs a box collision. Let's put this to 10 size, like that. Put it right here. Okay, so and we just need the begin overlap event from the collision box and let's say cast to AI car 1. Then we say set path like that. We set it to 3 in this example and then we just have to say select path. That's it. Compile and save that. And when we now hit play, the car is driving with something about 20. And now it changed the path. And will drive much faster to 50. Great. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know. And um, yeah, goodbye.